Welcome to Familypreneur, the podcast for parent entrepreneurs raising kidpreneurs. It's time for your weekly dose of inspiration and actionable tips to build your business and find better balance, all while strengthening your family. And now we'd like to introduce your host. She's my mom and the bomb.com, Meg Meg Brunson. Hey there, thanks for joining me on another episode of the Familypreneur podcast. Today's guest is a community curator, speaker, number one best-selling author, and a motivator who supports ambitious women and a few good men move from feeling hectic to harmonious. As a recovering trial lawyer, she knows firsthand what it feels like to have a demanding job. As an entrepreneur with a passion that lights her hair on fire and a busy family, she's in the thick of it with you. Today, we're going to dive into her concept, Intentional Margins. So get ready to jump off the hamster wheel of to-do lists with Katie Jeffcoat. Hey, Katie. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, I'm excited to be here too. Now, I want to start by jumping in to your background. So I feel like you've got a really interesting, (laughs) really interesting story. Um, You started your, your career, your your career journey as a lawyer. So tell me a little bit about that and what made you step out of that role and into the role you're in now? Yeah, well, it is a, you know, a lot of people have these winding paths of how they got from where they are, you know, from where they were to where they are now. And for me, I knew when I was seven years old that I wanted to be a lawyer and I never wavered from that goal. I was on the straight and narrow path for every single minute of my life until I went through college and went through law school and became a lawyer. It was the only thing I ever wanted to do. And my career took me to Washington, D.C. from a itty bitty town in southern Minnesota. I literally grew up in a town of 2,006 people in the middle of a cornfield. (laughs) And then... Followed my husband, who was my boyfriend at the time, to Washington, D.C. And, you know, like finished uh, law school and became a lawyer out here in D.C. where we still live. It's been, gosh, almost 20 years. And we were just, you know, doing the two-income law firm life for a while. And then um, I started to have kids and it got a... I didn't necessarily get harder because I had quit practicing law when I finished maternity leave, but I could see how hard it was going to be. So I just stopped doing all of that. You had kids and you decided to leave the workforce, which I think so many people are going to relate to. And then what did you start with? Was like your first um, step into entrepreneurship? Is that what you're doing now? Or- That part has been a little bit of a wild ride. I, you know, I was having these kids and I was feeling really guilty for not wanting to do scrapbooks and play dates anymore, but also feeling guilty for not wanting to practice law, which was the only thing that I ever wanted to do. So I was in this mix of what am I going to do? And why can't I just be happy doing play dates and making homemade Play-Doh and all the things I thought that would be so fun and relaxing? It wasn't fulfilling. So I started out in a direct sales company, which I loved because I got to build teams and create wealth, which is so fun. And then I really decided that You know, community was in our DNA and we weren't talking about it enough. And as women, we yearn to belong. We join knitting clubs and book clubs and play dates. And we do these things to find our people. And sometimes we can find our people online. Like how many people are there in the funny cat video Facebook group? Like millions. Or we find our people by showing up at a Starbucks. But either way, community is in our DNA and we all yearn to belong. So I started building communities everywhere that I went, whether it was in the little preschool or the local coffee shop, I just kept doing that. And that's really where I realized that that's what lights my hair on fire. 
<laughs> I love that. I love that story and the relatability of it. I too started in with direct sales and then kind of grew up from there. One of the things we're going to talk about is this concept of intentional margins. So can you start by introducing that kind of in relation to, you know, how you currently offer that to your clients? Yeah, it is so stinking much fun and so easy. What I found is that balance is unachievable. And we're all, not we're all, most of us are striving for this balance and it's not equal. And what I found is if we can try to strive for harmony instead of balance, we can win. We can win. It's like the yin and the yang. When it's together, it's in complete balance. But when you pull the yin and the yang apart, they're completely out of balance. And that's what harmony is. So I created um, words around what I was always doing, but hadn't really defined it called intentional margins. And what that is, is it's a buffer of space and time to find harmony between your to-dos and your priorities. Because what's happening for a lot of us women entrepreneurs that have kids and families and all these things, we are on this hamster wheel of to-dos. And at the end of the day, we have more to-dos than when we started. And the minute you think you're going to jump off the hamster wheel, the spinning plates are going to come crashing down and you don't, and you just stay on the hamster wheel, never really getting to those priorities, the things that matter most to us. Uh, And that's individual for each person. And so I love to show people how to identify and prioritize their priorities for a more successful, harmonious life. And it's working. People are doing it. They're having massive success. And that just lights me up. It's so much fun. So the to-dos and the priorities, in a way, it's like the to-dos, because I think I'm very familiar with the concept of like work-life balance. And I use that a lot. So in that sense, like work is the to-dos and life is kind of like the priorities, like your priorities being your family and your to-dos being like all the things. (laughs) you have to do just as an example, right? Right. Yeah. And so the priorities can be, I want to write a book. I want to start a side hustle. I want to have breakfast with my kids. I want to have coffee with my girlfriend. I want to get my dog to not pull on its leash, right? It could be any of those things. I sometimes think of it as opening a book. And if you open a book, it's beautifully justified. If you think of your to-do list as the words in the book, and your priorities as the margin. You can see where you can live in like those meaty parts of life, like the really good stuff in the margins. But if you're opening this book and you're visioning this book and the third line goes out into the margin and then maybe the seventh line and the 12th line and you turn the page and nothing's justified anymore, it feels so random. And then we start to feel overwhelmed because randomness causes overwhelm. So how do we make sure that we create some guardrails, some balance, create some non-negotiables so that we don't have our to-dos running into our priorities so we get to the end of life and or the end of the week or the end of the month and realize, oh my gosh, I didn't do any of the things that really light my hair on fire. So that's a long answer with lots of stuff, but that's kind of how I think about breaking it all down for like all the good stuff. So what is the, what is the process look like for starting to set? And I feel like not just setting them, but defining them too. Cause I think that that's probably a, a, a step is understanding what, what to do is are typically like overflowing. Right. So like, what does that process look like for our listeners? Yeah. So I would suggest get out a blank piece of paper and put a line down the center. And on one side, write all of the to-dos that you have in your mind kind of floating around, right? And what sometimes we find, I know I find this with myself, some of my to-dos are just want-to-dos or ideas. They're not actually tasks. 
because I'm creative, like lots of your listeners as entrepreneurs, we have all these things we could do, but they're not really like moving the needle to do's right now. And then we have on the right side of the paper, write down all of your priorities. If you got to design your perfect day, what would it look like? Would you sit and have a cup of coffee in some quiet time? Would you plan some meditation or making sure that you read books at night to your kids or once a week you had coffee with a friend or got on the phone call with a friend, like whatever that is to you, whatever your priorities are. And then you can kind of see how they line up. And that's the first step to just identifying where your pendulum is, like where, where is your yin and your yang? Like, are you ever doing anything in your priorities? And I think it's going to be different for everyone, but a lot of people are going to be like, I could probably do better. For sure. Like there's, there's always going to be something that you wish you were doing that you just aren't making time for now, or you feel like there's not enough time, but there may be strategies to make time. Yeah. Without feeling guilty. I think that's part of what our community does is helps people not feel guilty for all of these, these, you know, things. Right. And One of the ways that I do some of this is I talk a lot about non-negotiables. I didn't come up with that term. It's been around for decades. Um, But when you really identify what your non-negotiables are, you can start to make sure that those are part of your day and they're in your calendar. So you're working your calendar. Your calendar isn't working you, you know, like you Mm want to make sure that you're in charge. and then. it it all, it works out because harmony is all about the 80%, really. Everything is never going to be perfect. So one of my non-negotiables is breakfast time with my kids and getting them off to school. So seven to 9 AM, I am on kids duty, doing all the things, setting them up for success. And sometimes I have a morning meeting And I'm not there. And my husband does it. We do it as a family, but sometimes I'm not there. And that's okay because it's 80% of the time. So my kids know this. They have their expectations managed. They know I'm trying to do this as much as I can. And it's not perfect. And it gives everybody a little bit of grace. And I think that's huge. I definitely think guilt is the biggest like culprit for, for moms and for entrepreneurs and, you know, moms in general, just always it's, there's an element of comparison and we have to be okay with the fact that what's good for us doesn't have to be good for other people and what's good for other people doesn't have to be good for us. So I love the idea of getting clear on what your 80% is, you know, what your standard is and just living up to that without feeling bad about the the 20% of the time that you may fail to meet those expectations. Yeah, because nobody's perfect and nobody is, we're not robots. Like we, like stuff happens. Somebody gets sick, like all kinds of things happen. But one thing that I, um, I heard this question in a podcast years ago by this woman, her name is Megan Hyatt Miller. And she asked this question that completely changed the way I look at setting my priorities. And I'm going to tell your listeners because it has been such an aha moment I literally, every time I see my friends, we talk about this, whether we're having wine, whether we're sitting in a coffee shop, I tell everyone this. And it is this question, where can I invest my time so the people I love feel loved by me? It's so profound. Where can I invest my time so the people I love feel loved by me? So I talked to my kids and I said, where can I invest my time so you feel loved by me? And what we found was they don't care about family dinner. I was putting so much stress on myself (laughs) to do these family dinners and all they wanted was family breakfast and to be, you know, feeling good when they walked out the door. That's what they cared about. And what a relief to have everyone on board with something that was so attainable. But until we talk to our kids about that, we never know. And my kids are nine and 12. So, you know, if you have littles, clearly they're not going to be able to articulate that. But at Mm -hmm. nine years old, my little boy knows exactly what is important to him. And so we define the win at home. 
if you do that at work and you do that at home, that's when all the magic happens. And by work, like I work from my home office, but I still have work. So whatever that is, that's, that's magic. That is where, that's where you get to the good parts of life. Everyone feels like they're winning. From that exercise, you now know that you can spend more time working on your to-dos later in the day and not impact your family, right? Right. Because they don't, quote unquote, they don't need you (laughs) at dinner. Right. I love a good, like, ideal calendar, like an ideal week. And I am an early bird, like super early. So I do a big chunk of my work between 5 and 7 a.m. because that is when I'm most focused and where my brain is like firing on all cylinders. So then from 7 to 9, I'm doing stuff with my kids. I get back from the last bus stop drop-off at 3 minutes to 9, something crazy like that. And then at 9 a.m. till 3 is time that my kids are at school. At 3 o'clock, my little one gets home from school. And then it's all hands on deck again. And I love that, that I love intentional time blocking. I've just never thought of it in, in the, the way that you described it as margins. And I do, and I do like that concept. I want to just kind of recap and bring us up to where we are. So we've talked about making that list was kind of step one. What are your priorities? What are you to do's? You know, I think we have to like step two, like we have to define the win. So unless I know what my kids want, it's hard for me to define the win, which is what I was saying about, you know, asking them, yeah. right? Because I was defining the win at something totally different that they could have cared less about. And which was like making dinner and making them sit down around the table and like doing all these things that we read about, right? So that wasn't important to them. They'd rather do all of that at breakfast. So defining the win, what does that look like? How do I move the needle forward in work and at home? My example was home, but Perfect. Same thing with my at work, right? Like, um, what results am I responsible for in my business? What activities drive those results? Define the win. And then um, the next step is setting your non-negotiables. Okay. And try to achieve that 80% of the time. So nobody, nobody's a robot. And I know that I've already said that, but look, we have to give each other some grace. We have to give ourselves some grace. We have to give our community members some grace like the people we are in community with that are also entrepreneurs that are doing all these things, like no judgment, like stop. We need to like give each other some grace and just do that. And I think part of setting non-negotiables is reducing the randomness because randomness causes overwhelm. So decide what your non-negotiables are, put them in your calendar, and then see what's left. It's so fun. And what's the next step? You know, I think the next step is really just talking about boundaries, saying no, a little bit of self-care, even um, trying to understand that we have choice. So we get to choose how we show up every single day. And we get to choose how we respond to things we can't control. Yeah. So it's getting the calendar, realizing that we're doing our best, and keeping, keeping it all positive. But this is what happens. I've done this for so long that I know for sure this is what happens. You think you've got it. You've written down your ideal week and something throws you off and you're like, oh, sugar, now I'm done. Like, I can't. <laughs> like, this is crazy. And this is why I think community is so important because we are all just an hour away from the step of overwhelm, like from yeah. that cliff of overwhelm. It could be, we could be hitting the edge of the cliff of overwhelm every hour, every week, every day, whatever that is, we need the tools to take two steps back and the community to support us. So that's where I, that's why I created the community because it's so important to have this vision of moving from hectic to harmonious with the tools to take two steps back. For me, the tools are intentional margins. and we bring in experts in certain fields to do masterclasses, but the community is what helps you get there. Like we all need our people. Right. And so that's what, 
that's what we do. And we call it coziest virtual coffee shop on Facebook because it's literally like showing up as if you were in a coffee shop and the people are just crushing it. They're doing all sorts of cool stuff from film producers, freelance writers to entrepreneurs to stay at home moms, all the things. And what we know is we're all the same. We're all we're all struggling with the same things of feeling overwhelmed, especially in our society today. So yeah. that's really what I'm passionate about is finding the harmony, moving from feeling hectic to feeling harmonious. Like how fun is that? And it's a cycle. Like it's like, it's like yoga, right? Like we can practice yoga every single day and still get better. It's a practice. It's the same thing when you're talking about this, if you're never going to be perfect at it and that's okay. That's the point. And I, I love that you mentioned setting boundaries and learning to say no, because it's, I'm a people pleaser. So mm-hmm. like, I want to, I just want to make people happy. I don't want to say no. I want to be, and I, that's probably has something to do with, you know, the way I was brought up or something, but it's like, I want to do all the things. And so if somebody asks me a favor, I'm very likely to be like, sure. And then get off the phone or whatever and be like, oh my gosh, how am I going to do this? <laughs> I feel like I've, bought, I've bitten off more than I can chew, you know, things like that. So being able to say no and, and prioritize those things and the community aspect is so important. I mean, I feel like anything, like, I, it reminds me back in, even in, back in college, like I did um, Weight Watchers, but it's that sense of community. Like if I was to try to do that on my own, it would not have been successful. But because you've right. got a group of people who are going through it, and as entrepreneurs, it could be especially lonely. So our people are hard to find in real life, like wherever you live, mm-hmm. even in DC, which I have lived in DC before. It's a big city, lots of people. Still, how many entrepreneurs do you meet? Not many. So, right. or at least online entrepreneurs, because that's we're a different breed, you know, right. a, di- a different breed. So, having that online community where you can connect with other people is invaluable. And I love that you've it's got those brilliant. ongoing trainings because these issues they keep coming up. Like if you're a people pleaser at heart, you can curb that for a little bit, but then it's going to pop back up. So having people to support you through it, having resources at your disposal has got to be amazing. It's really incredible. I mean, we have, um, you know, we did a series on setting boundaries on non-negotiables on habits, scripts for saying no, like this is how you can say no in an email. These four steps right? Like all the things that we're trying, trying to do and we're struggling with. And I just think it's, it's so important to find your people wherever they are. And I encourage people to show up as if they were in person, Mm -hmm. sitting around a coffee table in a coffee shop. And that's how people show up. And I think it's really, it's really special. And I think that's true for social media in general. Like social media is kind of my sweet spot, you know? And it's, it's supposed to be social. So you Absolutely. should always show up. And I mean, this is, I, this could go so many directions, like talk about cyber bullying and stuff like that, but you should always show up online in the same way that you would show up in person. Like that should always Absolutely. be exactly the same. So yeah, I completely agree. I'd love to kind of bring this kind of full circle back to your story. Tell me how things have changed for you since you've embraced intentional margins in your life. and and transitioned from that hectic to harmonious. Yes. It's really, I mean, it is so much fun. I know that I've probably said that a million times already, but it lights my hair on fire. So I, as a, as a lawyer, I was feeling very overwhelmed. There's a lot going on as a trial attorney. And then um, having littles, like having little kids is a lot, like that's a lot. And So you have this sense of hecticness, hectic, 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 and a lot of it's mindset. So when you can finally see the way to harmony, everything else seems to be so much more clear. And now I, I use my calendar, like it's my J O B. I love it. And I really stay true to that. And I think that helps give me the harmony that I love because one of the things I love the most is having coffee with friends. It's lights my hair on fire. I love the 
feeling of the warm drink going down my throat. I love looking at people face to face, like all those things. So I prioritize that on Fridays. I do coffee dates and it allows me to then spend Monday through Thursday really clear on what I need to do to grow my business and then be super intentional when I show up to see my friends or a new business colleague or something like that because I'm not just randomly putting all this stuff in my calendar without being intentional. So finding that intention reduces randomness. Mm -hmm. And when you reduce the randomness, you reduce the overwhelm. That's amazing. Now, you've referenced your community and a couple other things. Where can people learn more about that community and learn more about you and connecting with you? Oh my gosh, I love to connect. Um, I am at Katie Jeffcoat pretty much everywhere. So just put that into your Google search bar or your Facebook search bar or Instagram or LinkedIn or wherever, and you will find me. My book, you can put my name into Amazon. You'll see my book that I co-authored with 20 other crazy, awesome women called Women Who Impact. And my community, there's a link on my website, katiejeffcoat.com. Super simple and easy. And it's only open a couple times a year. So if you show up to my website and it's not open, make sure you get on the wait list. Because if you're not on the wait list, you're probably going to miss it because it goes super fast, but it's really, really fun. And you can learn more about what we do in there and decide if it's something that you're open to. Thank you so much for sharing your story and so much valuable information. I love the concept of intentional margins. It's something I haven't heard of before. And it's a perspective that I hadn't really considered before. So I know that our listeners are going to love that. And we all need you know, I'm big on redefining balance. Like that's kind of my thing. So I loved hearing about how you have taken this concept of balance and redefined it and reframed it yes. in your own way. Harmony. It's all about the harmony. I love it. So when I want to see you use the intention, use the hashtag intentional margins, when you're having coffee, when you're driving around in your RV, when you're doing all the things that light your hair on fire, I want to see you and your listeners using the hashtag intentional margins so that I can follow along and cheer you on every step of the way because I love, love, love cheering you on. I think that is like gives so much confidence and it just, it's so good to just be good people and I love a community. So if you use it, I'm going to find you and I'm going to write you something. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Take care. You too. That's it for today's episode of the Familypreneur Podcast. You will find all of the links mentioned in this week's episode and the show notes at megbrunson.com slash podcast. Until next week, I'll see you over in the Familypreneur community. Bye for now. Want to connect with other like-minded parent entrepreneurs? Join the discussions in our official Facebook group. You can find it at familypreneurcommunity.com. Community.com.